So hi everyone, my name is Michelle Jamenka and my hometown is Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm currently majoring in human development and family studies and I speak English and Spanish. And my travel experience is that I've been to Peru multiple times, that's where my family's from. And so I normally spend my summers there. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. I'm studying journalism and media production as a sophomore at UNC. I speak English and a little bit of French and my focus countries are France and Thailand. My dad is Thai and I am planning to study there next year. So I will be talking about why life in Thailand today. So first, I just wanna start with a little focus activity to kind of see what we know about wildlife in general and maybe about wildlife in Thailand and Peru. So give us some uh, answers in the chat about what your favorite animals are. Um, I wanna know now if you guys know what an ecosystem is, maybe your teacher can type it in the chat. Um, it's okay if you don't know what an ecosystem is, but I wanna get a sense of what we know about wildlife already. All right, so an ecosystem is a type of place where certain kinds of animals and plants can live because of things like weather and geography. Um, so for example, a forest is one kind of ecosystem, but another kind of ecosystem might be a desert. And so um, I think we can all kind of think of some different kinds of animals that might live in the desert, but not in the forest, in the forest, but not the desert. Um, and this is just because of different things that are in those environments that um, the animals and plants need or they're used to. So in deserts, they're gonna be pretty dry. So um, the animals and plants that are gonna be in deserts are gonna be ones that don't need very much water. And so they're gonna be different from what's in forests. Um, so we're gonna talk a little a bit more about ecosystems in a little bit. Um, but now I just wanna know if anybody knows where Peru and Thailand are. You can put out a continent or just broader region of the world. So with this map, you can kind of see, oh, do a language class, awesome. Um, so on this map, you can kind of see where we are over in the USA. Peru is south of where we are. It's on the west coast of South America. And Thailand is over in Asia, specifically in Southeast Asia. So we're kind of spread out today. All right, All right I'm gonna pass it on to Michelle and she's gonna tell us about a little bit about wildlife in Peru. Okay, so first, just some general information about Peru. As we saw on the map, it is in South America, and the language that they speak there is Spanish. And I have a little picture of the flag. So its main colors are red and white, so it's kind of similar to ours. And then they have a representative democratic republic government, which just means that it's also similar to ours, where they have like a president that rules the nation. So what kind of ecosystems does Peru have? So as we said before, ecosystems are different types of areas in the world. So Peru has many different types of ecosystems. They have the Amazon rainforest. Has anyone ever heard of the Amazon rainforest before? It's pretty big and it spans um, across many different countries in South America. I think it's also in um, that's great. It's really, I'm glad that they know what it is because it's also in Panama, I think Cuba. I don't know. It's pretty cool. And we'll be looking at a bunch of animals that live there too. And then they also have the Andean cloud forest, which is also another rainforest. And then they also have tropical deciduous forest, which just has like a lot more trees. And then they have Parama grasslands. And then they have a lot of marine coastal and wetlands. So I'm going to be focusing on the wildlife and animals. So I think someone said that their favorite animal was jaguars before. So we're going to be learning a little bit about jaguars in Peru. So they're found in the Amazon rainforest. And just some fun facts is that they love water and swimming. So you'll probably see them like swimming along the river. And then they live about 11 to 12 years in the wild. I think that their max life expectancy is 20 years, but on average, just living in the rainforest is normally around 11. And another fun fact is that they're actually born blind. So as they grow older, they like develop their vision. 
and it takes about two years for them to like grow independent from their mom and be able to like leave their cub. And these are just some pictures. And then this is just a video of how like jaguars interact in the world in the rainforest, so. So it's normally the mother jaguar that normally like licks their kids. So in a way of like taking care of them and cleaning them. Um, so next I have some of my favorite animals which are apacas and llamas. So there's a lot of misconceptions between the two. It's kind of hard to differentiate or like see which one's which but alpacas are normally bigger and they have like smaller ears and then llamas are smaller animals and then their ears are like pointed up. So in the pictures we have alpacas at the top and then llamas are on the bottom. So alpacas, they're um, native to Peru and they're one of the main sources of income since they have a lot of fiber and wool. That's what they're mainly like used and that's why we have so many alpacas in Peru because they're a big part of the economy. And they're used to make like scarves and coats and hats and cloths. And then this doesn't harm the alpacas either because they just like shave them like you would for a sheep. So it's pretty cool that they have like so many things. They actually like spin the fiber to make it really thin because when you look at an alpaca, you would think for it to be like really fluffy because alpacas are really fluffy, but they actually make some really cool like scarves and shirts and everything. And then llamas are another native animal. Like I said, they're smaller than alpacas and they live between 15 to 25 years. And I thought a fun fact was that they spit whenever they get like agitated or when they're like bothered. So has anyone ever been like spit at by a llama? I know in my elementary school, they had llamas come and like to visit. And then I think one of them spit at someone in my class. And I then the um, camels, I think camels might also spit, don't they? I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they don't have as much wool as alpacas, so they're not as beneficial for the economy, but they're still very cute and fun to look at. And this is just another video about alpaca wool and just like how it's made and just some different artifacts. ...de la alpaca blanca, la cual se podía teñir a muchos colores. Hoy en día está cambiando este giro a la conservación de la alpaca color, en colores naturales para que se puedan confeccionar prendas. Una vez que tenemos los animalitos que han nacido, se quedan para continuar con este proceso de mejora dentro del fondo, aquí, y también puedan ser replicados en las comunidades que deseen. Si no, al sacar animales fuera, también ayudamos a que la gente pueda ser sostenible. Good. And since that video is in Spanish, I don't know if some of you that are in a bilingual class want to type in the chat what it was about for the people that don't speak Spanish. They probably could see the subtitles, but if you want to tell us some things you learned from the video, you can type it in the chat. Okay, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about birds because Peru has a lot of birds. So first of all, we have the Inca Tern on the left and it has a population of about um, 150,000 but it is a declining population. They are going endangered. So it's very important to take care of the species 
and then they have a lifespan of about 14 to 20 years. And a little fun fact about this bird is that they have like a little mustache. If you can see in the picture on the left, they have like a white mustache and the longer the mustache is, that means the healthier the bird is. And then we have hummingbirds. So there's actually about 360 hummingbird species in Peru and they're the smallest migrating bird. And they're actually the only bird that can fly backwards, which is pretty cool. And they weigh on average less than a nickel. So that's kind of cool to think that a bird weighs less than a nickel because nickels don't weigh too much. And then the last bird we have here is the Indian Cocoa Rock. And it lives in the cloud forest and high elevation. So that's one of the ecosystems we were talking about. And then here, females are responsible for practically everything. They build the nest and take care of the younger birds. And they're actually the national bird of Peru. And they're pretty big. They're like 12 inches in length. So the other two birds are pretty small. But then this bird is like a foot. They're probably like this big. And then we have a brown-throated sloth and a giant river otter. So someone else said that their favorite animals were sloths. So this is hopefully interesting. But sloths can actually rotate their heads like owls. They can rotate at 300 degrees. I don't know how far you can you guys can rotate your head, but mine only goes like this far. But then owls goes like all the way around. And it's pretty cool. And they live about 30 to 40 years. And they sleep about 15 to 18 hours a day. So that's most of the day. And they're very accomplished swimmers. I don't know. Can, I, can anyone see if they like ro can rotate their head more than just to the side? I think some people that are like double jointed, they can like rotate their head more, but I can't. Um, and then we have the giant river otter so they can be up to six feet in length which is like the size of a human pretty much i mean i'm not six feet tall hopefully no elementary schoolers are six feet tall either but a giant river otter would be like this tall and they live along the amazon just like the sloth they live in like rainforests and they're currently an endangered species and they live about 14 years And then this is just a video of a sloth on a tree. Now I'm going to be passing it over to Sarah to talk about Thailand. So yeah, before we go over to Thailand, um, I don't know if any of you want to say what your favorite animal was from Peru in the chat. Um, of the ones that we saw that Michelle showed you, you can write that in the chat if you want. And also, um, I checked just so that you guys know, since we're talking about different ecosystems, and the Amazon rainforest goes through eight countries, and I put it in the Zoom chat. So it goes through Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Guiana, Suriname, and French Guiana. Good. All right. So now we'll learn about some different um, ecosystems and animals and maybe some plants in Thailand. Yep. So first, I just want to start by giving us a little bit of background about Thailand. Again, it's in Southeast Asia. You can see it there on the map, that lighter orange color. Their flag is red, white, and blue. So it has the same colors as our flag and it has stripes, so it's pretty similar. Their official language is Thai and you can see the Thai writing down in the right corner. And Thailand is led by a king. So that is a little bit different from here in the United States, um, but they do also have a prime minister. So it works a little bit like um, maybe Britain or um, the UK. 
All right, I wanna see if you guys can guess what kind of ecosystems Thailand has. So I have a few listed here. It's okay if you don't know exactly what these ecosystems are, but maybe you can tell a little bit from the picture. Just let us know in the chat, which ones you think we're gonna have in Thailand. There's the forest, grassland, desert, tundra, freshwater, and marine. Those are the six main types of ecosystems, but not all of them are in Thailand. So I wanna see what you guys think we're gonna talk about. Yep, these are good guesses. If we look on the next slide, we'll see which ones we're actually gonna talk about. So Thailand has forests, grassland, freshwater and marine ecosystems. So we did guess a bunch of those. Good job, guys. So we're gonna start with forests. Um, I do wanna say that there are a bunch of different kinds of forests across Thailand. Um, so not all the forests are gonna be the same. Um, they do have some drier forests in the north of Thailand, um, but they also have rainforests and jungles, which are other types of forests. Um, the main difference between rainforests and jungles is that rainforests have a lot of canopy overhead, which is like a lot of trees and vines, um, and jungles don't have quite as much of that. So a lot of the activity that happens in rainforests is going to be above ground, and in the jungles, that activity is going to be on the ground. All right, this video is going to show us a little bit of one forest in Thailand. You might be able to recognize some of these animals. Some of them you won't, um, but we'll talk about them in a little bit. All right, so I'm going to start by talking about some plants or kinds of plants and trees that might be in Thai forests. The first is on the left. It's giant bamboo. It's also known as dragon bamboo. It's like regular bamboo. It's just a lot bigger um, and it can grow up to 40 centimeters per day, which is about 16 inches. So that's maybe this much per day. I have a lot of house plants at home and I wish they grew that much, um, but that is really fast for a plant. And in the middle is the tulang tree. This is found in rainforests and it has roots called buttress roots, which you can see on the right. The tulang tree is not the only kind of tree that has these roots, but it is pretty unique. Um, here in the United States, most of the trees that we see, we don't see the roots, the roots grow underground, um, but these buttress roots grow out from the tree above the ground. So you can see that it's a lot taller, just the roots than the people in that photo on the right. And one reason for this is to support the tree, help it not fall down if it's windy or anything. Um, but it's also because roots are meant to help trees get nutrients, which is kind of like vitamins for us. So we need vitamins to be healthy. These trees also need nutrients. And so they get that from the soil. But in rainforest, there are so many different kinds of plants trying to all get nutrients from the soil that there's not a lot of nutrients left in the soil. So most of the nutrients are actually gonna be from the leaves that fall to the ground. And so that's why these roots stay pretty shallow. They don't go too far into the soil because all the nutrients they want are in the top of the ground. So some insects that you might see in Thai forest, the one on the left might be pretty familiar. I've seen this one here in my backyard in North Carolina. It's the praying mantis. Um, these are generally carnivorous insects, which means they eat other animals. So they'll eat smaller bugs, things like flies, um, but they can actually get pretty big depending on where you are. They can get as big as your forearm. And these bigger praying mantises can even eat animals like small frogs and lizards, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, and on the right, that's a jewel beetle. 
There are hundreds of species of jewel beetles and they come in all different kinds of colors. Some of them even have spots. Um, they actually have two wings. Their shell is made of two wings and they use that to fly. They can fly up to 50 kilometers in a day, which is about 30 miles. I, can even, I can't even think about walking 30 miles in a day. Um, I don't think I've even driven 30 miles anywhere in a while since COVID, but um, that's a lot for a little tiny bug. And their wings were once used to make jewelry in Thailand, um, or they were used to decorate the clothing of important people that worked in the government. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a flower because I love flowers. I hope that some of you love flowers. This flower is pretty unique. Um, it's only going to be found in a couple of countries in Southeast Asia. Thailand is one of them. It's called the giant Rafflesia. It's actually the biggest flower in the world. It can grow up to about a meter, which is three feet. And again, it's only found in a few countries. Um, it takes nine months for the bud to develop and become a flower, but after it does become a flower, it's only in bloom for a few days, maybe up to a week. Um, and usually we know flowers for smelling really good. This one is not known for that. It's actually known for having a bad smell that's been compared to the smell of rotting meat, which seems really weird, but that actually attracts a lot of bugs and animals to it, and that helps the flower pollinate and grow more. And I want to know if you guys would want to smell this flower. I think for me, I'd want to see it in person at least once just to see it. Um, but after that and after smelling it, I think I would not want to smell it again. All right, here's some animals that are in some of the forests in Thailand. On the left, that is a macaque monkey. Thailand has a lot of different kinds of primates and monkeys are one of them. Um, these do live in the forest, but you can also see them sometimes in the cities hanging around trees. They're about two feet tall. Um, they can be pretty cute, but you don't want to try to interact with them. They can be very aggressive. Um, a lot of people have to go to the hospital if they are scratched or bitten by one. Um, and a lot of them are used to being fed by tourists in Thailand. And so they'll actually take food from you sometimes just because they expect you to give it to them. Um, they're also really protective of their babies. So if you get close to a baby and one of the other macaques thinks you're maybe putting it in danger, they might attack you. So you really um, want to kind of keep your distance with these if you can. The other animal on the right, that's a sun bear. I know a few people said they like bears. Um, these are a lot smaller than the bears we have in North America. It's actually the smallest kind of bear. They're closer to the size of maybe a large dog. Um, they have black fur, but as you can see in the picture, they have kind of a ring of lighter colored fur around their neck. Um, they have long tongues, like you can see in the picture, and they use these tongues to help them eat honey. They do eat honey, um, which is kind of an image we have about bears and cartoons and things. So they eat honey with this tongue. They also eat honeycombs and bees. Um, this is another omnivorous bear which means they eat a combination of plants and animals. Um, but this one is gonna mainly eat things like insects. Um, and I also know with, with monkeys like this, I'm pretty sure my younger sister Allison went somewhere where there was monkeys that had seen tourists a lot. And the, one of the monkeys stole her hair tie from her hair so that she didn't have anything yeah. to put yeah, her Yeah, they are known for kind of pickpocketing. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's Debbie. just because they think it might be food. Um, or they think they're like toys, but yeah, you want to keep all your stuff close to you if you're anywhere near them. Yeah. All right, another kind of environment that we said we could find in Thailand is grasslands. These are normally next to forest or close to them. Um, a lot of the grasslands in Thailand are not, are not natural. Um, they're places where trees were cut down either to make things like furniture or paper or to try to start farms. Um, but the trees were never planted back. So all that's grown back is grass and shrubs. One animal you might see in the grasslands in Thailand is the Asian elephant. These are also in forests like we saw in the video, um, but you can also see them in grasslands. They are very social and they live in herds, which means they live in... You'll rarely see an elephant in the wild by itself. It's always meant to be with a herd. So if you see an elephant by itself in the wild, it probably means that something's wrong or it's lost its herd. Um, and as we all know, they're very big, um, but the Asian elephant is a little bit smaller than the African elephant that you will find in different countries in Africa. Um, and they also have smaller herds, so they live in smaller groups. 
And on the right is the gaur. It's another big animal. Um, it's a kind of wild cow that you can find in Thailand. It's actually one of the biggest land animals on the planet. So the, the only animals that grow taller than it are elephants, rhinos, hippos, and giraffes, which is not a lot. Um, so it is a very big animal. It looks very strong, as you can see in the picture. Um, they all have horns, whether they're male or female. So whether they're a male cow or a female cow, they're all going to have horns. And they are like elephants in that they also live in herds. Something that's cool about both of these is that they're matriarchal, which means their herds are led by older females in the group. So they have um, kind of a girl power thing going on there. So now we're going to move on to water environment. This is freshwater environment. Basically, that just means it's not salt water. Um, so there's going to be different kinds of animals that can live in freshwater and in salt water. In a lot of places, they have a mix of freshwater and salt water. Um, and these freshwater environments in Thailand are going to be mostly lakes and rivers. Um, so freshwater fish. On the left, we have the giant freshwater stingray. Um, these are huge. They can be the size of a car. Stingrays are considered fish. So this is suspected of being the largest freshwater fish um, that can swim in a mix of freshwater and saltwater. Um, and on the right, that's the Mekong giant catfish. It looks a little bit different from the catfish we're used to because it doesn't have those little whiskers. Um, but this is considered the biggest fish that swims only in freshwater. So again, the giant stingray can swim in kind of a mix of freshwater and saltwater, but the Mekong giant catfish only swims in freshwater. And they can be over 600 pounds, which is a lot for a fish. And I wanted to share a pretty example of a freshwater environment. This is the Nong Hong Kung Puapi Lake. Um, this lake is covered in uh, pink lotus flowers. Um, it's sometimes called the Red Lotus Lake, but clearly they're pink. Um, from October to February every year is when the lake blooms with all of these pink water lilies. And it's become a popular destination both for local Thai people and for people visiting Thailand as tourists. Um, they even preset the path before um, the flowers start to bloom so that when the boats go through with visitors, they don't hurt any of the flowers. And the last kind of environment we're going to talk about is marine, which mainly means saltwater or ocean. Um, Thailand has a lot of coastline. Um, and it actually has a lot of little smaller islands that are included in the country. So it has a lot of different marine environments. A lot of the coastlines of Thailand and the islands have coral reefs. These can be found in a lot of different places around the world, like Australia. Australia has a really famous one called the Great Barrier Reef, um, but they also have these in Thailand. Um, coral are living creatures. It doesn't really look that, like it because they don't move a whole lot, but they are living creatures. They eat algae that grows on them and around them. Um, and they're really important because they protect coastlines from things like storms, from big waves, um, and they help prevent erosion, which means they um, stop the island from losing too much land. And sharks, uh, the, specifically the whale shark, is one kind of fish that you can see off of the coast of Thailand. Not too often, um, but it is one species that's off of the coast. The whale shark is the biggest shark, and they're the biggest of any kind of fish alive today. Um, it's easy to point them out from other sharks because they have these uh, really unique spots. And they're a little bit like fingerprints in that each whale shark is going to have kind of a different pattern of these dots on them. And so on the next slide, we can watch a little video of a whale shark swim.
I'm wondering if any of you want to see this whale shark in person, if you would like to see it up close. I think maybe I want to see it up close just to see how big it is, um, but I'm scared of sharks also. So I'm not sure that I want to, you know, potentially see other kinds of sharks. The whale shark doesn't eat big fish. Um, as you could probably see, it doesn't have teeth. So it mainly eats little things like um, plankton or tiny fish that are in the water. You can't even really see them, but that's what they're doing when they have their mouths wide open, like you saw at the end of the video. Um, they're just kind of collecting that plankton and smaller creatures in the water in their mouth to eat. And the smaller fish that you saw around the whale shark, those are called pilot fish. They stick around the whale shark so that they can eat the parasites off of it. Um, and so they have a good relationship with the whale shark because by sticking around it, the pilot fish can get food and the whale shark stays healthy. Um, and so the whale shark won't eat those pilot fish because it helps them stay healthy. And last with Thailand, I just wanna kind of talk about the relationship that the people have there to the wildlife. Um, one thing that Thailand sells a lot of to other countries is coconut and coconut milk. Um, but something that's kind of sad is that some different coconut companies in Thailand are using monkeys for labor. Um, so they're using monkeys to do the work and pick the coconuts. These monkeys are trained to pick the coconuts for the businesses. Um, and when they're not picking the coconuts, they're often kept in cages or in chains. And you can kind of see a chain on that monkey in that picture there. Um, and often their teeth are taken out so that they don't bite the farmers. And this is really sad for the monkeys because it's not a good environment for them. They can't really be out in the wild in a lot of space and play with other monkeys. Um, and another thing is that Thailand is known for elephant tourism, which means that um, people who go to Thailand for vacation or just to visit, a lot of them like to ride elephants. Um, Thailand actually used to use elephants for logging. So when trees were cut down, the elephants would be used to pull these logs out. Um, that became illegal in the 80s. But after that, the elephants that had been used to pull the trees, they started being used for tourism and for riding. Um, this is not great for the elephants because they have to be trained to let people ride them. And this training can often be abusive and really um, it can hurt the elephants a lot. Um, but the tricky thing is that once elephants are raised by humans and they're in captivity, they can't be returned to the wild. They're not gonna know how to live in the wild anymore, and they're not really going to be accepted by a herd. So it's kind of hard to fix the situation. And as you can see on this last slide, um, a lot of the animals that I talked about today are at risk of becoming extinct, which means that in a little bit, they might not be alive anymore. There might not be any sun bears or any Mekong giant catfish. Um, and when they're in danger, this means that they're at risk of becoming extinct. So there, there's a risk that we won't have them anymore in a few years. Um, sometimes extinction is natural. If we think about the dinosaurs, um, we can't really stop them from becoming extinct. But a lot of the reasons that these animals are at risk of becoming extinct is because of the choices of humans. Um, so for a lot of them, it's because of overfishing, because of pollution and because of deforestation, which means um, clearing out the forests and their trees so that these animals um, don't have homes anymore. Um, but there are a lot of efforts to save these animals, efforts to protect them and give them back their homes. Um, so we're hoping that um, they won't go extinct anytime soon. And I believe Michelle has an exit activity for us. Yeah, and also before we go to this one, um, maybe we'll ask you guys of those these animals that we saw from Thailand, which one you would want to see in person the most. So if you want to put that in the chat, if you want to see the sun bear or the elephant or the giant catfish or the whale shark, you can put those in the chat and let us know which one. Yeah, so just look on your screen and say, um, which country is in South America? Is it Peru or Thailand? So you're correct. Uh, Peru is in South America and Th Thailand is the one in Asia. Um, I'll do the next poll. Which country includes the Amazon rainforest? So again, this covers eight different countries, but is it Peru or Thailand? Get the 
pulled. So oh, correct. The Amazon rainforest um, includes Peru as one of the countries. All right. And one more. I'll do the next poll. Which country has the sun bear? Peru or Thailand? You guys have good memory. So you're correct that the sun bear was one of the animals you saw from Thailand. All right. So we did, we did talk about... Um, which animals you wanted to see from each country, but if you had a number one from both countries combined, if you want to put that in the chat, you can of which animal or plant would you most like to see in person from either country. So remember in Peru, we saw sloths and llamas and alpacas um, and different birds. And then in Thailand, um, we saw those ones more recently, but if you had a favorite one from both, you could put that in the chat. Or if you want to put in the chat, if you'd rather go to Peru or Thailand, which country you would prefer to go to, you can put that in the chat too. Um, and our next question is, what country or ecosystem would you like to learn about next? So are there any other countries you're interested about or any other ecosystems you want to learn more about after today? You can put that in the chat. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and you guys can type any questions you have into the chat. So they might be questions about these animals or ecosystems, or if you just have any questions in general about Thailand or Peru, you can ask those questions too. If you wanna ask us questions about food um, or travel or music or dance, you can ask those questions too. So um, I will let Sarah and Michelle answer your questions. And we'll give you a minute or so to type some of those questions into the chat. Um, Ava wants to know if you've ever, if either of you have ever seen a pink river dolphin. I don't know if they have pink river dolphins in, in Thailand or in Peru, but have you ever seen pink river them dolphins? in the Amazon, um, but I've never seen one. Yeah. Have you, Michelle? I've never seen one either. Me either. Yeah, she thinks they are from the Amazon. That's a good question. You're right. I think so too. Um, what kind of clothes do people wear in Thailand, Sarah? Sure. So um, they wear a lot of the kind of everyday clothes that we might wear, things like shorts and t-shirts. Um, but for traditional clothing, um, I'm not sure, I don't know what the name is, um, but there's a dress that women wear for formal occasions like weddings or ceremonies. Um, it's a long skirt that goes down to their ankles. Oh, um, <laughs> they wear like long skirts that go down to their ankles with um, a shirt underneath and then they have kind of a, a wrap that goes around the front kind of like a, a what would you call it Liz like a, a sash it's like a sash that goes around the front and then um, for these ceremonies they'll usually have their hair up and kind of a hairdo so it's not hanging down good um let's see um Calissa wants to know how you got those pictures close up. So were those your pictures or those, were those pictures that you guys found um, online? Yeah, mine were all from online. Yeah, sadly, we didn't take. Yeah, but usually if you, um, for people who photograph animals for a living, they have these really huge cameras. So you can stand really far away from the animal and get a picture that looks like you're really close. Um. Miss Barsanti's class asks, are there dolphins in Peru or Thailand? I think there's dolphins there are some, in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. I believe there are some off the coast of Thailand, um, but I don't think they're going to be the pink dolphins that somebody asked about earlier. Um, <clears throat> Diego wants to know more about how they dye the wool for the... Um, alpacas and the llamas. So I don't know if you know much about the dyeing process, Michelle, or if you have anything else you want to tell us about the wool that they make. Well, I think they get pigments from like the earth. Like I know they get like pigments from like clay or they get like special cloth dyes and they just like, they spin the fiber until you get it like really thin. And that's when you like soak it, you kind of like boil it in a way so that would dye like soaks in the wool mm -hmm. good yes yeah. yeah, so you can use natural dyes um miss davis's class wants to know what kind of foods they eat in both countries so you could maybe tell us a 
a couple popular foods in Thailand and Peru. Sure, we had a presentation on this early in the semester, so maybe that'll be up on YouTube soon for you guys to watch. Um, but in Thailand, some popular foods, curry is a really popular food. I think somebody said maybe their dad's been to India. They also have curry in India. Um, and so it's gonna be a little bit of a different kind of curry in Thailand, but that's one thing that's really popular. Um, they have rice with pretty much every meal in Thailand. Um, I'm kind of blanking on other food. Oh, they eat a lot of mango. Um, one of my favorite desserts is mango and sticky rice. Um, so it's literally just mango and like really sweet rice, um, but that's a dessert that I really like. And in Peru? Um, in Peru, they eat a lot of chicken and corn. They have a lot of different types of corn and a lot of different kinds of potatoes. I think they have over like 400 different kinds of potatoes in Peru. Yeah, they have different colors in some countries in South America than we have here. There's purple potatoes, I know, in some places in, in South America. I saw, I found them one time at Trader Joe's, so sometimes you can find them here. Um, let's see. Charlie wants to know if you were ever spit on by a llama. So you said you were spit on by something, right, Michelle? Or you just saw? Well, I think one of my classmates were ah. spit on because they were, like, agitating it. Okay. I have never been spit on, thankfully. <laughs> That's good. Um, Austin wants to know, how do they threaten the animals? So what are some of the things that they do, Sarah, that um, that the animals don't like? Sure, so um, this isn't really threatening, but one of the ways they get the monkeys that they used to pick coconuts, um, they get them from the wild as babies. Um, so I'm not sure how they isolate them from the other monkeys and are able to get them, but that's actually illegal. Um, and so a lot of this monkey labor is illegal. Um, with the elephants to train them, a lot of the times they'll use things that are similar to whoops, sorry, whips, um, and they also use hooks, which um, really hurts the animals. Yeah. Um, Miss Birmingham's class says, I would like to know if Peru has other indigenous languages that are still used today. Um, they have a language that was used in like the Incan civilization. It was called Quechua, but it's like, it's not really taught anymore, but people still like know it because they were taught it, but it's kind of like becoming a dying language. Yeah, so I think it is still used by some indigenous people, but just not, yeah, it's not taught as much as it used to be. So hopefully they'll continue teaching it to their children so it won't, we won't mm -hmm. lose it. Um, Emily wants to know why they ride the elephants. Sure, so um, a lot of the people that ride elephants don't really know that it's bad for the elephants. Um, it kind of just seems like a fun activity. You know, it's kind of like riding a horse. Um, obviously, it's, um, they do different things to train the animals, to train the elephants than they would do for horses. Um, but it kind of just seems like fun. Um, but usually when people ride elephants, they don't really know how the elephants might be hurt. So they have um, good intentions. They just don't know what the elephants have gone through. And I think they have in Thailand some places that are elephant rescues where mm -hmm. they treat the animals, maybe they're animals that can't go back in the wild and you yeah, can so, see them, but not ride them, but you can still right. see them. Yeah, a big alternative to riding elephants is being able to wash them. Um, and so those sanctuaries are something they try to do a lot because the elephants can't go back in the wild. So it's a better alternative um, to the riding um, kind of places where you ride the elephants. Um, are whales hunted there? I don't know if that was a question for Peru or Thailand um, off of the coast. I know whales are hunted in general. There's lots of rules about not hunting them, but sometimes they still are. Do you know, Michelle, at all, if that's common hunting in, off the coast of Peru? I don't think it's common in Peru. I know that they're very like, I know in Peru they do a lot of like fishing, but I don't think they like touch the whales. One other thing I remember too was in addition to Quechua, the other indigenous language in Peru is Aymara, I believe. Um, so both of those, but again, they're not it probably in different different regions. Thank you guys for your great participation, all your questions, and I think that you remembered a lot based on the questions we asked you. And we hope that one day you get to travel, and maybe you'll get to go to Peru and Thailand yourself and see some of these animals in person.